Hey, we are two Star Wars nerds, and today we are talking about what George Lucas actually has to say on the Force and the Chosen One prophecy. The Maker himself. The Maker himself. Apparently, people get this twisted a lot, and uh, let's go to the source. Yeah, we have to see what he says himself. So we're going to be looking at two things, and there's there's so many things that we could look at, and maybe we'll just keep doing that. We'll just keep kind of like going over what he talks about in various forms and mediums. Um, but in particular, we're going to first look at this part of this time interview from 1999. So this is before The Phantom Menace is released. And what's cool is you actually haven't even read through this. Nope. So um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The whole thing, you know, a 19 minute read, oh, wow. it gets into a lot about joseph campbell and kind of creating like a new myth um all that stuff but i'm just going to read this for first bit here and then we'll skip and read one portion in particular so bill moyers the interviewer says joseph campbell once said all the great myths the ancient great stories have to be regenerated in every generation he said that's what you are doing with star wars you are taking these old stories and putting them into the most modern of idioms, the cinema. Are you conscious of doing that, or are you just setting out to make a good action movie adventure? First, to have Joseph Campbell say that about your work is yeah spectacular. George Lucas says, "With Star Wars, I consciously set about to recreate myths in the classical or in the classic mythological motifs. I wanted to use motifs to deal with issues that exist today. The more research I did, the more I realized that the issues are the same ones that existed three thousand years ago. That we haven't come very far emotionally. So true. It is, and I and I think that's." why star wars george lucas star wars if we talk about just honestly like pre-disney like through 2012 that's why that star wars stands the test of time mm -hmm. in particular but he's going on to talk about phantom menace before he gets into some kind of other deeper stuff but one thing in particular wanted to pull out they start talking about maul and he's kind of like the idea of this like incarnation of evil and the devil all of this but he gets into this segment right here where he says, is the emotion you wanted from him, referring to Maul, different from the emotion you wanted from Darth Vader? Lucas says, it's essentially the same, just in a different kind of way. Darth Vader was half machine, half man, and that's where he lost a lot of his humanity. Mm -hmm. He has mechanical legs. He has mechanical arms. He's hooked up to a breathing machine. This is, or this one is all human. I wanted him to be an alien, but I wanted him to be human enough that we could identify with him. He's us? Yes, he's the evil within us. Yikes. Do you know what, or do you know yet what, in a future episode is going to transform Anakin Skywalker to the dark side? Yes, I know what that is. The groundwork has been laid in this episode. So, I mean, to him already, the Phantom Menace is extremely important. Yes. Um even on a meta side, like he just got to tell the story he wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. The film is ultimately about the dark side and the light side. And those sides are designed around compassion and greed. The issue of greed, of getting things and owning things and having things and not being able to let go of things is the opposite of compassion, of not thinking of yourself all the time. These are the two sides, the good force and the bad force. They're the simplest parts of a complex cosmic construction. Now we've we've been talking even a lot, you know. We don't we like we haven't seen anything since the Book of Boba Fett, um, mm -hmm. but we keep getting shown things where apparently this is a confusing subject, but it's not. There is good and evil in the world. There are clear lines of demarcation yep. between the two, and Star Wars addresses that. And then he says this, and then we'll we'll go to a video. In a, in a moment the interviewer bill moyer says i think it's going to be very hard for the audience to accept that this innocent boy anakin skywalker can ever be capable of the things that we know happen later on i think about and wonder what he looked like at nine years old mm. george lucas says there are a lot of people like that and that's what i wonder what is it in the human brain that gives us the capacity to be evil as human beings have been in the past and are right now and like i'm telling you this it just keeps going and going and like it is such a long interview but it is 
really good and it gets into a lot of very interesting things. Um, but before we get past this, I, I just wanted to see, I have some thoughts on this, but I don't want to over talk. What are your thoughts? Cause you just went into this totally raw. Yes and no. I'm raw to this article, but yeah. what he's saying, I feel like he's portrayed through his movies. So it's not surprising to me. It's mm -hmm. the message he's, I think he's got his message across very well in the, the first six movies. Um, and that's something I often think about is like, especially that's why I love the Phantom Menace so much is because you see cute little Anakin, like this cute, sweet, innocent little boy and you get this depth. And I think it actually makes Darth Vader more of an intriguing character because like he brought up, like you don't just wake up or you're not just born as Darth Vader. Yeah. Like there's a process and there's pain and there's hurt that wasn't dealt with. Um, and we, when we don't deal with those things, um, we become selfish and we want control, which leads to anger. But th you see that throughout all of Star Wars and everyone has a choice. Like when they're confronted with something, are they going to come in with the pain and like embrace that? Or are they going to try to embrace getting out of that and receiving like healing? Um, so yeah, this is not surprising to me. Yes, it's a new article, but I'm like, yeah, that's what the movies are. So I'm, I, that's why I get confused hearing about things now. I'm like, that's, are we talking about the same thing? Yeah. And, and I, and I like how it just, it's, it's just so clear to him where it's like, this is a story about good and evil. And in particular, when he's talking about the force, like Not there's blurred lines. Yeah. There's and no gray area. And I like how it's, there's good force. There's bad force, right? There's mm -hmm. good and evil. And obviously things that's an oversimplification to a degree. But in particular, then even the point of this video, like, okay, this is one of many things that he addresses the force directly in, but then with the chosen one prophecy that there's this ingrained mythos of one that would come to bring balance to the force. And there's, there's a lot we could get into just like deep diving both in lore and I guess in religion and mythology and all of this about this chosen one um that literally is like a response in the force mm -hmm. you know through his virgin birth and all this but we're gonna go and watch a, a quick video where george actually talks about this again and i feel like it's like if you want to enjoy star wars again like just get back to the basics like yes. get back to to this kind of stuff so let's get into this video. We can see exactly what he is talking about. You gotta remember this is one movie and it's meant to be seen one through six. So I- Write that down. <laughs> I think when you watch the actual movie in order, the story will become very clear that Anakin is the chosen one. You refer to yes. the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. Do you believe it's this boy? And even when Anakin turns into Darth Vader, he is still the chosen one. The prophecy is that Anakin will bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. He I just don't understand so how that's good. not clear to people. But nonetheless, that's just a pain point and a frustration. I'm going to let the man talk. Comes Darth Vader. Darth Vader does become the hero. Darth Vader does destroy the Sith, meaning himself and the Emperor. Mm -hmm. He does it because he is redeemed by his son. So, you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. So the prophecy is true. It's so good. And by doing that, he redeems himself for real. from being Darth Vader back to being Anakin again. You were right about me. Tell your sister. You are right. Everybody thought of Darth Vader as this big evil guy that, you know, had no heart. I mean, he was just evil. Um, but in the end, it's not that at all. And it, I mean, here's a guy who has lost everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he believes that he's the chosen one. He's not doing wrong things knowing that it's having a negative impact. So there is there's that sort of naivety to him. Uh, now that that wasn't there before 
and it makes him more human in a lot of ways. So I think it's so clear in so many different mediums. I mean, just from the creator himself, he is the chosen one. The one and only. And there's no way about it. And especially when you talk about his ideas with the force, that there's good force, there's bad force. And he t- he's talking about greed and compassion and all of this. And that there's this chosen one to bring balance to literally, essentially, destroy both. And even in Return of the Jedi, it's like the return of Anakin. Like, it's always been his story. And... I don't know. This is the kind of stuff where I'm like, I can get so fed up with what things have become that even being removed from it. But I'm like, this is like, this is what it's about. And so, yeah, I can't talk a lot about what's happening now because we don't watch it. But what I I can talk about is even just watching this. And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen Return of the Jedi. It doesn't matter how many times I've seen Star Wars. Like I get emotional, like I'm like tearing up watching, like thinking about that little boy and how he had a messed up life and seeing this hero's journey Mm -hmm. takes a takes a wrong turn but does he really like yes he does some evil things um there's no question about that but there he comes back and like then there is that redemption and it's the beautiful thing is it's through his son like yeah and and we want to do a whole good story (laughs) we're going to keep making videos on a lot of this and I think what's what's really complex is is essentially what he's saying is he wants to retell in in his words, you know, like a myth for um, like a modern generation. And so what you have is you have him literally descending into the the depths of darkness mm-hmm. to destroy it from within. And so whether he was doing that consciously or not, still then you get into the question of like it introduces people to this idea of can you like is there something bigger than yourself at play because he you could have just been written off as like hey he's just doing this because he's evil or whatever but it's like it was actually something that was being willed to bring balance and it just brings in all these like mythical um questions that are so much more than just like an action adventure film you know it's like deep deep questions when I think it's evident in four through six, he's evil. Yeah. No question. Like, I'm, we're not going to say he's a nice guy and he's doing all this, you know, because he's trying to bring balance. I think, yes, he's probably trying to bring balance. We've been in those situations, but um, I think more so is he's just struggling with pain and hurt of losing Padme and wanting control. Um, and so that that selfishness and it will lead you into being something mm-hmm. you never thought you would be. Um, when you give into that hate and to that anger. Um, but I think it's very evident. He was a sweet, innocent boy grew up in slavery. Yet he was still sweet and innocent in the phantom menace. And then you see an attack of the clones. Um, he matures, he falls in love. He goes against the Jedi ways and gets married and in between the two, he consummates his marriage and there's, you know, then Padme becomes pregnant with Leia and Luke. Um, and then just out of the fear of control and losing her, he became the very thing he never wanted to become or never tried to become. I think he was blinded to who he truly was as Darth Vader. And I think Luke opened his eyes to who he truly is. He's like, no, I know Anakin Skywalker. Like, that's who you are. You're not Darth Vader. And um, our son has this really cool um, toy from like Burger King, the X-Wing got him. Shout out to X-Wing. Um, and it's like... So Revenge of the Sith Burger King toy. Yeah, and it, it's like fat. It's Darth Vader. Darth Vader. And then you can open it and then there's this Anakin toy in it. And even just, he was like two and a, two, two and a half when he got it. And he's like, Anakin's inside. I'm like, yes, son, you get Star Wars more than a lot of people. Like Anakin is inside and he needed his son, Luke, to reveal that even to himself. So just that simple, like, like you said, going back to the basics, like it is that simple. 
Yeah. And, and this is just what's so interesting is, you know, we're going to have more videos on it, but it's like, did he have to go through that? Or was there another way, another path? And it's like, I don't think there was. Yeah. Could he have stayed good and brought balance? I, I don't think so. I think like his life, while not like predestined necessarily in terms of every step was like he still had free will, but I think like that was the path he had to go down. And so then then his story becomes much more tragic and yeah. it is like he's the hero and the anti-hero at the same time. Um, yeah, it's just super fascinating stuff. I'd have to think and chew on that a lot more. I don't know yeah, how to answer and, that. Yeah, and that's why we're going to have... <laughs> At, at the risk of just verbally processing and rambling forever. That's why we're going to keep making videos on this. But we wanted to kind of just... Is there... There's still eight seconds left. Yeah. Are I you don't, holding out on me? No, I'm not holding out on you. Okay. I know. Some crazy nugget. No. <laughs> um, but we're going to keep doing these. There's lots and lots of things that we have sources. And we're just going to start documenting, going through it. And who knows what's going to come of it other than just enjoying the star wars that we love that we love but with that we are two star wars nerds may the force be with you always, always.